Hello everyone! In this control engineering, process control and control theory tutorial, we explain how to use feedback linearization approach to design a controller for controlling the fluid level in a tank or a reservoir. We will come up with a very elegant control algorithm that does not rely upon the classical linearization that usually depends on computing the partial derivatives. Instead, we will design a control algorithm that will cancel the nonlinearities in our model. After the nonlinearities are cancelled, we can use the classical linear control theory to design a controller. In fact, the controller will be nonlinear, however, the closed loop system will become linear. This relatively simple but effective idea can be generalized to systems of tanks connected with each other and to several tanks controlled by several pumps. The feedback linearization approach has a number of advantages over the classical PID control. The most important advantage of this control algorithm is that it is global and it can guarantee asymptotic stability across a very large range of states and control inputs. On the other hand, a simple PID controller with fixed parameters usually does not perform well over a large range of states and control actions. It has to be tuned for specific and narrow ranges of states and control actions. However, the main disadvantage of the feedback linearization approach is that it requires precise knowledge of the model parameters. In this tutorial, we explain how to design a feedback control algorithm for the tank system shown over here. And furthermore, we explain how to model and how to simulate a feedback control algorithm for a nonlinear tank dynamics in MATLAB and Simulink. Here's a Simulink block diagram that implements the nonlinear dynamics of the tank system and that implements the feedback linearization control algorithm. By the end of this tutorial, you will learn how to create this block diagram and how to simulate it. For example, over here, is the desired water level in the tank. This block over here models the nonlinear dynamics of the tank. This part over here is our feedback linearization algorithm. If I run the simulation and if I click over here, you'll see the results of the feedback control algorithm. This blue curve represents the response of the system. That is, it represents the response of the water level in the tank. On the other hand, this yellow curve represents the input flow rate that's used to control the tank level. We can see that after some transient response that lasts for 5 seconds, the water tank becomes approximately equal to desired set point. A link to the file containing the Simulink model is given in the description below this video. Ok, let's start. We consider a tank with a cross-section area of A filled with an incompressible fluid. The fluid level at the time instant T is H. The input volumetric flow rate to the tank is denoted by QIN, where IN stands for the input. The output volumetric flow rate out of the tank is denoted by Q out. We assume that the output flow rate is passive, that is, we assume that this flow rate is not actively controlled. Then, we assume that the cross-section area of this hole is much smaller than the cross-section area A of the tank. Then, we assume that we can control the input flow rate QIN. This input flow rate is created and delivered by a pump. Our control objective is to control the fluid level H. We assume that the fluid level H can be measured by using the fluid level sensor. In our previous tutorial, whose link is given in the description below, we derived a nonlinear model of the fluid level inside of the tank. This model is described by this nonlinear differential equation. dH over dt is equal to 1 over A multiplying input flow rate QIN minus C over A 
multiplying square root of h. In this equation, c is a constant that depends on the discharge coefficient and on the gravitational acceleration constant. A is the cross-section area of the tank. Qin is the input flow rate. Let the desired fluid level that we want to produce and that we want to control be denoted by H des or DES. Again, the set point for our control algorithm will be denoted by H desired. And this set point is set by the user. The first step when defining and deriving the control algorithm is to define the control error. The control error is defined like this. E is equal to desired fluid level minus the actual fluid level. The main idea of the feedback linearization control approach is to define a new control input QIN that will cancel this nonlinearity in the model. Following this idea, we define the control input QIN like this. C square root of H plus P multiplying the error. Over here, P is a control parameter that's chosen by the user. That is, we have a freedom to select P and P will be used as a tuning parameter of our control algorithm. The next step is to substitute QIN in this equation. And let's see the result over here. DH over DT is equal to 1 over A multiplying C square root of H plus P multiplying E minus C over A multiplying square root of H. This is equal to C over A multiplying square root of H plus P over A multiplying the error minus c over a multiplying square root of h. We can see that this term cancels this term and consequently our dynamics becomes dh over dt is equal to p over a multiplying the error. Over here, I repeated the two most important equations from the previous derivation. Here is the definition of the error, and here is the derived expression for dh over dt. dh over dt is p over a multiplying the error, and that's equal to h dot. Again, p is the control parameter that we can choose and that we can tune. Okay, next, let's take the time derivative of the error. e dot is equal to h desired dot minus h dot. Since h desired is constant, its first derivative is zero, and we have minus h dot. That is, e dot is minus h dot. Now, let's substitute h dot from this equation over here. As the result, we obtain h e dot is actually equal to p over a multiplying e with a minus sign. And that's it. This is our closed loop error dynamics. It should be observed that the closed loop dynamics does not depend on the nonlinear terms. That is, the closed loop dynamics is completely linearized despite the fact that the original system is nonlinear. Next, let's recall the control law or the control algorithm. The control algorithm has this form QIN is equal to C square root of H plus P 
E, where again P is the control parameter that we can freely choose. This control low is actually nonlinear due to this square root of h. However, the error dynamics is completely linear, and that's the power of feedback linearization. Next. From this equation, we can observe that for any positive value of p, that is, for any p strictly greater than zero, the closed loop dynamics is asymptotically stable. Let's see again and let's analyze this equation. The asymptotic stability of the error means the following. Here I will place time and here I will place error. Due to some initial condition in the system, we will have non-zero error initially. Since the closed loop error dynamics is asymptotically stable, error over time will behave like this. It will asymptotically decay to zero. This means that h will approach h desired as the time increases and this can be directly seen from this equation that is we achieved our control objective the only requirement is to select p to be greater than zero by increasing the parameter p we can have a faster convergence of the control error that is for larger values of p we will have this type of convergence. This happens when P is increased. The error will converge to zero faster. However, from this equation, we can see that if we increase P, the magnitude of the control input will increase. However, due to the actuator, actuator saturation, this is not desirable. This means that there should be a trade-off between the speed of convergence or the speed of response and how large is the control input. Here is the block diagram of our control system. Here is the plant. The plant is a tank and we are controlling the fluid level H. Its differential equation is given over here. Then we assume that there is a sensor measuring the liquid level and here is the feedback. Here is our set point, that is, this is desired fluid level in the tank set by the user. Then, here is the error, the error is the difference between H desired and H, and here is our feedback controller. It's simply C multiplying the square root of H plus P multiplying the error, where P is the control parameter. We see that the controller needs to have information about the error and information about the actual measurement h. Then we have saturation limits. These saturation limits model the physical constraints of our pump. Namely, the pump cannot produce a negative flow rate. This means that the pump can only pump water or a liquid in this direction. It cannot suck the water out of the tank. Then the pump cannot produce an infinite flow rate. Consequently, we have the saturation over here. That is, the pump can only produce some flow rate between 0 and Q max input. Then, this saturation limit produces the limited QIN, that's actually our flow rate that goes inside of the tank. And that's it. The next step is to model the system in MATLAB and Simulink. Next, let's start with MATLAB modeling. The first step is to define the model parameters. That is, we need to define A and C. Here's how we define A. Over here, I'm assuming that the cross-section area of a cylinder is a circle, and consequently, the area will be defined like this. Here, the radius of a circle is one meter. Then, here's the C constant. Over here, I'm assuming the discharge coefficient of 0.6 and over here I have the standard term, square root of 2g, where g is the gravitational acceleration constant. Here, for simplicity, I will choose a relatively low value of p. The p is the control parameter, and you can change p value as you wish. Next, it's very important to evaluate this script such that 
all the parameters are in the MATLAB workspace. The Simulink model that we will develop in the SQL will use these parameters, and the Simulink model will directly search for these parameters in the MATLAB workspace. The next step is to start Simulink. We do that by typing Simulink over here. Then click on the blank model and let's start with modeling. The first step is to model this nonlinear dynamics. How to do that? Well, from this equation it follows that H is actually an integral of the right hand side. That is an integral of 1 over A QIN minus C over A square root of H dt. Consequently, the first block we need to add is an integrator. Double click over here and type integrator. Here is the integrator block. The next step is to model the square root of H. Double click here and search for root. Here is the square root. Then click here on format, select the square root and do the following. You should do it again. Click here and over here you can rotate this block. Connect this part over here and this will produce square root of H. Next we need to multiply the square root of H by C over A. Double click here, search for gain. Rotate this gain. Connect the blocks, double click on the gain block and type C over A. Click on OK. Next, expand this block slightly and let's continue. We need to create this minus over here and we need to add this term and this term. Double click here and search for sum. Here's the sum, expand the sum, double click over here, change this last, last minus, actually last plus to minus, connect this part over here and now we have minus C over A multiplying square root of H. Next we need Q input. The Q input will be actually determined by the control algorithm. However, for the time being, let's double click over here and search for constant. That is, for the time being, we will model the input simply as a constant. So this will be QIN, then we need a gain. This gain should be 1 over A. Double click here and this should be 1 over A. Click on OK. Connect this block with this block, this block with this block. Let's add the scope. Here's the scope and let's simulate the nonlinear dynamics. Click on the simulation, change the stop time to 40 and click on run. Double click over here to see the response. Good. Now, over here you can change the input, for example, set 2, and run the simulation once more. Here it is. Good. Okay. A standard practice and a suggested idea when modeling a complex system is to organize your simulink blocks as sub-blocks. That is, this should be a single block representing our plan. So select everything, then click here and click on create subsystem. And voila, now our dynamics is a simple subsystem. Erase this arrow, erase this constant, erase this, erase this, and let's continue. The next step is to define the error. Double click over here and search for sum. Here's the sum. expand this block. Next, we need to define age desired. We will define age desired as a constant. Here it is. This will be age desired and double click on the sum block, change this plus to minus and connect the output of our dynamics to this summation block. The output of the dynamics is H. 
H or basically H desired minus H produces the error. That is the error signal is the output of this summation block. Next, we need to model our control algorithm. Let's see what's happening over here. Obviously, we have this term P multiplying error. Consequently, click here, search for a gain, double click on the gain, and the gain should be P. Enlarge this block. Then we need this term, square root of H multiplying C. Double click here, search for root, here is the square root, you can move this block here, connect this line with the input of the square root and this will produce the square root of H. Next we need a gain. We can see over here that the gain is equal to C. Double click here and change the gain to C. Connect the blocks and over here we need the summation or better to say the add block. Click over here and search for add. Connect this part and connect the output of the gain to the input of the add. And finally connect the output of the add to the input of our dynamics. And that's it. Next, let's add the mux blocks. Click here and search for mux. The mux block will enable us to plot on the same scope two signals. We will plot the controlled output and we will plot the controlled input. Okay, now let's verify everything. This is h, square root of h multiplying c, this is the term over here. Then we have error multiplying p, then we perform summation over here, and this is qin. Then this goes to the mux, and the output also goes to the mux, and the output of the mux goes to the scope. And here it is. Let's connect everything. And finally, we are ready to run the simulation. Simply click here and let's hope that everything will be fine. Okay, double click here and let's see the results. And here it is, voila! The blue line represents H. That is the output of our system. That is the control variable. And the yellow line represents the control input that is QIN. We can see that we are able to relatively accurately control the system after five seconds. Let's change the set point. For example, let's put five as a set point, click on apply, click OK, and run the simulation once more. Let's double click on the scope and let's see the output. Voila, here it is. We can see that we can relatively accurately achieve the desired value. Good. Let us make this block diagram to be more realistic. To make it to be more realistic, we need to add here saturation and limits block. This is because this QIN should be limited. Namely, in practice, a pump cannot produce a flow rate of a very large value. Also, the pump cannot produce a negative flow rate. To model this physical reality, or better to say, to model the physical limitation of our pump, we need to search for the saturation block. And let's add the saturation block over here. Double click on the saturation block and let's put the upper and lower limit. The lower limit is zero since the pump cannot produce a negative flow and let's put an upper limit to, for example, 10. Click on apply, click OK, and let's see the effect of this saturation block. To see the effect of the saturation block, let's run the simulation with the same age desired. Double click here. Okay, so this age desired is achievable. However, let's now change the age desired. For example, let's say that we want to produce the water level of 10. Click OK and click on Run. Double click here and let's see the output. Okay, we can see that we are working currently in the saturation initially. 
However, still we are able to control the water level. However, let's change this value, for example, to 20. Click OK and let's run again. Let's see what happens over here on the scope and we can see that we cannot produce the desired water level. That is, due to the physical limitations of our pump, we cannot produce the water level more than, for example, 13 over here. We can see over here that we are working in a saturation regime. Okay, that's all for today.